Hello, and welcome to today's webinar on breast cancer in younger women from diverse cultural backgrounds. I am Dr. Malkus, president of the board of directors for the Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition is dedicated to preventing environmental causes of breast cancer through community education, research advocacy, and changes to public policy. I am delighted to welcome today's presenter, Dr. Jill Oxley. Dr. Oxley is a surgeon in Hyannis, Massachusetts, and the director of breast care services at Cape Cod Hospital. She received her medical degree from Yale University School of Medicine, where she became interested in breast cancer diagnosis, surgery, and treatment. As part of the medical community, Dr. Oxley is a member of the American Society of Breast Cancer Surgeons, as well as a fellow of the American College of Surgeons. We at MBCC are honored to have her as a member of our board of directors. Dr. Oxley, welcome to the webinar. Thank you, Dr. Malkus. And thank you for the opportunity to speak as part of the MBCC webinar series. So today we're going to talk about breast cancer in younger women from diverse cultural backgrounds. We'll first review the data on breast cancer incidence, subtypes, and mortality by age and race or ethnicity. We'll look at some of the differences in breast cancer among different age groups, and we'll review the differences both between and within some of these ethnic groups. And so how big of the problem is this? Well, for this year, the American Cancer Society estimates that there will be over 1,919,000 new cases of invasive cancer diagnosed in the United States. Of these, almost 288,000 will be invasive breast cancer, and then with an additional 51,400 cases of non-invasive breast cancer, or ductal carcinoma in situ. Breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer overall, besides non-melanoma skin cancer, and the most common diagnosed cancer in women as well. Also for this year, the American Cancer Society estimates that there will be over 609,000 deaths from cancer. Cancer is the second most common cause of death behind heart disease, but the most common cause of death for women ages 40 to 79, and for men age 60 to 79. One quarter of the deaths in the US are due to cancer. And while overall breast cancer is the second leading cause of death in women, it is the leading, leading cause of cancer death in black and Hispanic women. And so to look at these numbers slightly differently, you see for women over here on the right, breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer, accounting for almost one third of breast cancer diagnoses, and the second leading cause of cancer death at about 15%. But age is important. The risk of having a diagnosis of breast cancer does increase with age up until the 70s, but the risk of death from breast cancer increases into the 80s. And what this means is that overall, one in eight women, or 13%, will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime, but fortunately, only one in 39 women, or 3%, will die from it. And so with these numbers, this stresses the importance of prevention. And we can think about prevention in two ways. Primary prevention deals with modifiable risk factors, and we know what some of these are, and it's estimated that 30% of breast cancers can be attributed to excess body weight physical inactivity, and alcohol intake. And then we can also look at secondary prevention through screening mammography. And while breast cancer is such a common disease, there are differences between ethnicities. The median age at a diagnosis of breast cancer overall is 62, and the median age at death is slightly younger at 60. But all ethnicities are diagnosed at and die at younger ages than white women. For white women, the average age of diagnosis is 64, but the average age of death is 70. But for Hispanics, the median age of diagnosis is 57, at being the youngest, and then the median age of death is 62. And when we talk about the incidence of breast cancer, what that means is the number of women 
per 100,000 who will be diagnosed. And the incidence of breast cancer is still highest in white women. Over here on the blue, the blue graph, white women are all the way on the left at 133.7 diagnoses per 100,000 women. But the mortality, which are the red bars, is actually highest in black women at 27.6 per 100,000, which is 40% higher than the rate in whites and more than double the incidence for Asian and Pacific Islanders. And these racial and ethnic differences also vary by age. Black women have the highest incidence under age 40, but Asian and Pacific Islanders have the highest incidence between the ages of 45 and 49. And these black-white disparities in incidence and mortality are, are largest in young women and then decline with age. The death rate is between 1.8 and 2.4 times higher for black women than white women if diagnosed between the ages of 20 and 49, but only between 1.1 and 1.2 times higher, so less than 20% higher if they're diagnosed at age 70 or later. And this increase in mortality is in part due to the higher rates of triple negative breast cancer in black women, which is a much more aggressive tumor type, and younger black women are less likely to have insurance coverage than older white women, especially over age 70 or when we get into the Medicare age. And this is illustrated on the next slide, where you can see the incidence rates, again, with the light gray bar, the light gray line representing white women, the incidence is overall higher for white women, but the mortality is highest for black women, which is the bright pink line. And the Asian and Pacific Islander women have the lowest rates of both incidence and mortality, the dark gray line. And there are differences in the characteristics of breast cancer, the tumors themselves. When we talk about the diagnosis, it can be categorized in three ways. Someone can have local disease, which is limited to the breast, regional disease, which is limited to the breast and the lymph nodes in the underarm or axilla, or distant disease or metastatic, meaning that the cancer has spread to other organs. And so Black, Hispanic, and women of American Indian and Alaska Native descent are less likely to be diagnosed with local disease than white women or Asian Pacific Islanders. Black women have the highest proportion of metastatic or distant disease at diagnosis. And all ethnicities have a larger tumor size at diagnosis than white women. And I mentioned triple negative breast cancer a moment ago. So tumors are subtyped based on things we call receptors. There are hormone receptors, estrogen and progesterone, and then a HER2 new receptor, which is a human epidermal growth factor receptor. And so triple negative breast cancer, meaning the cancer cells don't have any of those three receptors, are felt to be the most aggressive. And black women are twice as likely to have triple negative breast cancer than other ethnicities at a rate of 19% versus 11% in Hispanic and Alaskan, sorry, American Indian and Alaskan Natives, and down to 9% in white women and Asian Pacific Island women descent. Interestingly, the rates of HER2 positive disease are similar across the ethnicities. And when the patient cancer has the hormone receptors and the HER2 receptor, that ranges between 10 and 12 percent. But for hormone receptor negative HER2 positive tumors, it's even lower across the ethnicities between 2 and 4 percent. And so to look at that again graphically, the HER hormone receptor positive HER2 negative tumor, which is the most favorable subtype, is the most common, as represented by these bars on the left of the graph. The highest rates are again in white women at an incidence slightly higher than Asian Pacific Islanders and American Indian Alaskan Natives. But in the younger age groups, ages 20 to 49, the Asian Pacific Islanders have the second highest incidence, very close to white women at an incidence rate of 53 versus 50 per 100,000. 
triple negative breast cancer, which you see over here on the right for all ages, has the highest incidence in black women at 37%. And this is almost twice as high as the rates in white women, which are 19%, but three times higher than the Asian Pacific Islanders for all age group. All ages here, younger women under age 50 here, and then over 50 at the bottom. And the fact that the rates of hormone receptor positive breast cancer in young Asian Pacific Island women are only slightly lower than white women is felt to be in part related to differences in risk factor prevalence in younger Asian women who are more likely to be first generation immigrants. But the high rate of triple negative breast cancer in both young and older black women is felt to be multifactorial and includes genetic factors along with socioeconomic and social factors. And we'll get more about that in a little bit. And so what's been happening with breast cancer incidents over time? Well, overall, the incidence rates actually rose significantly in the 1980s and 1990s. And this is in large part due to the increase in the use of routine screen mammography. Non-invasive breast cancer or ductal carcinoma in situ increased tenfold during this time frame in women over 50, the population that was being screened from seven cases per 100,000 to 73. But the invasive breast cancer rates increased as well, but only by 40%, from 275 per 100,000 to 380. But over the last four years, the incidence rate of non-invasive breast cancer has actually begun to drop, about 1.5% per year over that time frame. The invasive breast cancer rates did drop in the early 2000s, and this was felt to be due to um, awareness that hormone replacement therapy was associated with increased risk of breast cancer. But then the rates began to increase and are approximately increasing by a half of a percent per year. And this is felt to be attributed to higher body mass index and lower fertility than in years past. And again, looking at that graphically, on the left, we see the non-invasive breast cancer, which had the big increase in women over 50 in the 80s, but then has started to decline. But the invasive breast cancer rates do continue to increase in all age groups. And while lowest, these rates are increasing in these younger women as well, as illustrated in the bottom line. But these, tre these trends are not the same when you break it down by race and ethnicity. The rate of increase is slowest in white women, accounting for the average of one half of a percent per year. Black women have a slightly higher risk, but the rate of increase is actually highest in women of Asian Pacific Island descent at 2.1% per year. And that's the dark gray line here, which you can see does have a steeper curve than these others. And then when you look at the rate of increase by tumor subtype, the rate of hormone receptor positive breast cancer is increasing in all groups. And the rate in black women actually took a pretty steep increase, you see here between 2005 and 2012 at 3.1% per year, but then has begun to stabilize. The rates of hormone receptor negative breast cancer have generally decreased or remained stable in all ethnicities except for Hispanic women. And then what about breast cancer mortality? Well, death rates were increasing by approximately 0.4% per year from 1975 to 1989, then decreased overall by 43% until the year 2020. And the decrease now is between 1.3 and 1.9% per year. And these lower rates are seen uh, across all ethnicities with between one and 1.4% per year for Hispanic, Hispanics, black women and white women, and even lower for Asian and Pacific Islanders, stable for American Indian Alaska natives. But while the death rates were similar between black and white women prior to 1980, which is right around here on the graph, the mortality rates began to diverge 
And then the peak discrepancy was in 2011. And then the death rate has persisted at about 40% higher for black women than white women. And part of that can be explained by the stage at diagnosis. So breast cancer survival depends highly on the stage at diagnosis, with over 99% of women diagnosed at age one having five year survival or still being alive at five years at greater than 99%. The average for stage two is 93%, stage three, 75%, and five year survival for stage four is 29%. But survival is lowest for black women in all stages of diagnosis except for stage one. And we see the largest black white discrepancies in stage three and stage four, with black women having only a 64% survival if they're diagnosed with stage three, up to 77% for Asian Pacific Islanders and American Indian Alaskan natives. And stage four, black women have only a 20% five year survival rate versus 31% for white women, and slightly higher for Asian Pacific Islanders and American Indian Alaskan natives. And survival also depends on the subtype, and this is true across race and ethnicity. Triple negative breast cancer does have the poorest prognosis, but black women have the lowest survival for all subtypes, not just triple negative breast cancer, including the ones that are felt to be more treatable specifically the hormone receptor positive cancers and the HER2 receptor positive cancers. And we see the triple negative breast cancers over here on the right, with all having lower five-year survival rates than the other tumor, tumor subtypes. But over here on the left, this is the hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer, which has the most favorable prognosis, but black women are down at 88%, whereas everyone else is in the 90%, between 92 and 96. And breast cancer incidence and mortality also vary by ethnicity, but also by state. And so this is US data, which we don't have available on the state level for the American Indian and Alaskan natives. But overall in the US, the incidence of breast cancer is 126.9 cases per 100,000 women. As we saw earlier, the incidence is highest in white women, followed by Blacks, Asians, and Hispanics. But the incidence rates in Black women is higher than white women in four states, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Virginia. And the incidence in Asian women and Hispanic women are lower than white women in every state except Hawaii, where the Hispanic rates are similar to white women. The overall death rate for the U.S. is 19.9 cases per 100,000 women. This is highest in black women at 27.9, followed by white, Hispanic, and Asian Pacific Islanders. The death rate for black women is significantly higher than white women in every state, except for Iowa, New Mexico, Oregon, Rhode Island, and Washington, Washington where the death rates are similar. But the death rate for black women is 50% higher in Arizona, Arkansas, Illinois, Michigan, Mississippi, and Missouri, but twice as high in the District of Columbia at 31 versus 15.6 cases per 100,000. And conversely, the death rates for Asian and Hispanic women are lower than the death rates for either Black or white women for all states. And what about the rest of the world? Well, breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in women up to age 39, aside from non-melanoma skin cancers, with 248,000 cases per year. It's the most common cause of cancer death in women at 42,700. We see the highest incidence of breast cancer in women up to age 39 in Europe, parts of Europe, North America, Australia, and New Zealand. But although these areas have the highest incidence, they have lower mortality. Conversely, parts of Africa, Western Asia, and Melanesia have the lowest incidences, but higher mortality. And that's illustrated on this next graph, where we can see the European countries here with higher incidence in young women, which is the y-axis, but lower rates, so lower mortality. And then over here, we have higher mortality, but lower incidence rates. And while there are, of course, geographic variations in healthcare, 
more evidence suggests that racial and ethnic minorities have poor outcomes compared to other ethnic groups within the same geographic area. And one study in particular looked at young women in the UK. So the POSH study, which was Prospective Outcomes in Sporadic versus Hereditary Breast Cancer, was published in 2014. They looked at 2,733 women between the ages of 18 and 40 who were diagnosed with breast cancer. Women in this age group are not eligible for routine breast cancer screening, but in the UK, they do have free access to healthcare. And what they found were that tumors in these young black women were significantly larger than white women at diagnosis, with an average of 26 millimeters versus 22 millimeters. Black women were twice as likely to have distant disease at presentation at 5.1% versus 2.4%. And there were more multifocal, multifocal tumors, meaning more than one cancer in the breast, in Black women than Asian or white women, from a range of 43% down to 20, almost 29%. And they had several proposed causes of these delayed presentation. They thought that these uh, Black women were less aware of the symptoms and risk factors of breast cancer. They thought that Certain ethnic groups had a fear of diagnosis or the stigma associated with a breast cancer diagnosis, along with fear of conventional treatments and mistrust of healthcare professionals. But when they tried to pinpoint these risk factors, what they did find was that a higher body mass index was associated with an increased risk of young triple negative breast cancer. Uh, and we do know that increased body mass index in postmenopausal women is associated with an increased risk of hormone receptor positive breast cancer. But now they've shown that a high BMI increases the risk of young triple negative breast cancer. And in their patient population, the body mass index was significantly higher in black women than in white women. And so when they adjusted for the tumor grade, stage, hormone receptor, HER2 status, and body mass index, they still found significant changes in overall survival, with Black women having poorer survival than white at 71.1% versus 82.4%, regardless of these factors. And so this also suggests differences in tumor biology between ethnic groups. And so to look a little further into the disparities in mortality, as we saw on a graph earlier, the death rates between black men and white women began to diverge after 1980. And this divergence coincides with increases in screening mammography and in adjuvant endocrine therapy. The rates of screening mammography have been significantly lower in black women than white women until recently. Now, screening mammograms preferentially detect uh, more favorable cancers than what we call interval cancers, meaning ones detected uh, either when in a patient who's not having screen mammograms or in between mammograms. And so those, the screening detected cancers are typically smaller and hormone receptor positive. Endocrine therapy also preferentially benefit targets hormone receptor positive cancers as this therapy is not considered in women whose cancers lack the hormone receptor positives, such as triple negative breast cancer or hormone receptor negative HER2 positive breast cancer. And so black women have higher rates of any hormone receptor negative breast cancer and 81% higher rates of triple negative breast cancer. Therefore, black women have not benefited from either screening mammography or endocrine therapy to the extent that other ethnicities have. And so there's lots of research into the hereditary factors that may impact the high rates of hormone receptor negative and triple negative breast cancer in black women. And most US black women have been found to be of Western Sub-Saharan African descent where hormone receptor cancers are more common. But as we saw in an earlier slide as well, these rates of hormone receptor negative cancer have decreased among women of all races. But the slowest declines have been among black women and interesting, also less affluent white women, suggesting social determinants influence hormone receptor negative breast cancer. And black women have an almost two thirds higher incidence of hormone receptor negative breast cancer than white women, but twice as high a mortality rate. 
and black women have a 22% lower incidence of hormone receptor positive breast cancer than white women, but a 19% higher mortality rate. And so this suggests barriers to medical care are in place, as well as differences in tumor biology, perhaps in response to treatment, but also in the adherence to treatment. And so trying to look further into these non-biologic factors, the psychosocial factors, the Sloan Epidemiology Center at Boston University published a study in 2021 as part of the Black Women's Health Study. This is an ongoing cohort of 59,000 US Black women. And as we know, Black women are more likely to have estrogen receptor or hormone receptor negative breast cancer. And so they look to assess the relationship of both individual and neighborhood psychosocial stress factors on both estrogen receptor positive, estrogen receptor negative, and triple negative breast cancer. And they had over 20 years of follow-up data. These women were given questionnaires about different life factors. Individual early life factors, which were prior to the age of 18, included loss of a parent or guardian, incarceration of a household member, financial hardship, and sexual or physical abuse. They assessed for individual adult life factors, such as their current marital status, level of education achieved, perceived experience of daily and institutional racism, as well as depression. Neighborhood level factors included socioeconomic status and disadvantage, and these were determined by US Census data, as well as the American Community Survey data. And then the personal factors, or we think of as the more traditional uh, breast cancer risk factors, such as age at menarche or the onset of menstruation, body mass index at age 18, parity or having children, the age at the first live birth, whether or not the patient breastfed, menopausal status, age at menopause for the postmenopausal women, use of oral contraceptives, first degree family members with breast cancer, and then their geographic region and level of vigorous physical activity. And what they found was that none of the individual factors were associated with a risk of estrogen receptor negative or triple negative breast cancer. But estrogen receptor positive breast cancer was more likely in women who had had a history of multiple sexual assaults as a child, who were married or living together, or who had the highest levels of education, 16 years or more. The neighborhood factors, on the other hand, were associated with the estrogen receptor negative breast cancer. So the neighborhoods with the lowest quartiles of socioeconomic status had a 24% higher risk of ER negative breast cancer, but a reduced risk of ER positive breast cancer. And the most disadvantaged neighborhoods had a 26% higher risk of ER negative breast cancer, but this was not associated with ER positive breast cancer. And the association between the disadvantaged neighborhoods and ER negative breast cancers were most pronounced in women with a high school education or less. And they found that their, result, their results agreed with two other studies showing a lower risk of ER positive breast cancer in lower socioeconomic status neighborhoods. And in part, this can be attributed to, again, the known risk factors, um, such as women with low, lower socioeconomic status may have more children and at an earlier age. But it also suggests that the ER negative breast cancers are due to unmeasured factors, such as environmental toxins, noise, and lack of safety. And lack of safety can cause higher levels of fear, unhealthy diet, and other behaviors along with stress, all of which have been associated with increased risk of breast cancer in various other studies. And so with a roughly 25% higher rate of ER negative breast cancer than white women, they concluded, uh, it's a quote here, Black women living in, living in disadvantaged neighborhoods were estimated to have an increased risk of ER negative breast cancer compared to those living in more advantaged neighborhoods. Given the prevalence of living in disadvantaged neighborhoods among Black women, it is possible that the disproportionately high incidence of ER negative breast cancer in US Black women may be partially explained by neighborhood environment. But then there are differences among Black women as a group as well. And so the American Cancer Society published a study in 2019 looking at the breast cancer subtypes among women born in Eastern Africa, Black women born in Eastern Africa, versus other Black women in the US. And they subdivided into US born, East African born, West African born, and Caribbean born. 
In their patient population, they found that the U.S. born were more likely to live in the South at 56% versus between 37 and 40% for the other places of birth. The U.S. born were more likely to live in counties with a higher poverty, poverty level at 53% versus 27 to 37%. But then they also found that the African-born women were more likely to be diagnosed under the age of 50 at 43 to 47% versus 22%. And the African-born women were more likely to be diagnosed at the later stages, stage three or stage four, at between 33 and 38% versus only 28% for the U.S.-born women. By tumor subtype, the hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative, was the most common type, with a range of 53% in the West African women to 68% in the East African women. Triple negative breast cancer was the second most commonly diagnosed tumor type in women born in West Africa, U U.S., and Caribbean, between 24.1% and 21.2%. But triple negative breast cancer was the third most common subtype in women born in East Africa, behind the hormone receptor positive HER2 positive tumors. And the most common subtype, again, hormone receptor positive HER2 negative, was more common in women diagnosed at age 50 or greater in all, regardless of birthplace. But triple negative breast cancer was more common in women between the ages of 20 and 49, regardless of their birthplace. And so their results suggested ancestry-related factors, with the East African women having less in common than the other places of birth. And so they suggested that these were ancestry-related risk factors, as most U.S. and Caribbean-born Blacks are likely descendants of people who were involuntarily migrated from West Africa to North America and the Caribbean between the 16th and 18th centuries. But another similar study drew somewhat different conclusions. A study out of the University of Miami published in 2019 looked at breast cancer in U.S.-born versus Caribbean-born Black women between the years of 2006 and 2017. They looked at women treated at two institutions. In the premise of their study, they, noticed, they noted that one in 10 Blacks living in the U.S. is foreign-born, and over 50% of non-Hispanic Black immigrants are from the Caribbean, with the most common locations being Haiti, Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, and Trinidad and Tobago. In Florida, Caribbean Blacks have lower cancer mortality than U.S.-born Blacks. And in New York and Florida, which are the states that have the two largest Caribbean Black communities in the U.S., they have the lowest cancer mortality rates among states with over 1 million in their black population. And so in analyzing these women, uh, they did have a slightly higher percentage of US born than Caribbean born at 55% versus 45%. The Caribbean born women were younger at diagnosis than the US born, but the US born had a higher body mass index and were more likely to use tobacco and alcohol. The Caribbean-born Black women had more, her more hormone receptor positive tumors than the U.S.-born at nearly 69% versus 61%, and the U.S.-born had more triple negative breast cancer than Caribbean-born at almost 28% versus nearly 20%. The Caribbean-born, though, were more likely to be diagnosed at the later stages, stage 3 or stage 4, at 44% versus 35%. But the Caribbean-born, even though they were diagnosed at later stages, had a 25% less risk of death and had better outcomes overall, regardless of their hormone receptor status, if they had triple negative breast cancer, or the stage of diagnosis. And so, in conclusion, you know, they did uh, conclude that Black women have worse breast cancer outcomes compared to other racial groups overall, but there were significant differences between the U.S.-born and Caribbean-born Black women in their both their presentations, the tumor subtype, and their overall outcomes. And so they also felt that psychosocial factors were playing a large role in terms of healthcare utilization, systemic barriers to accessing care, chronic stress, cultural norms, and environmental exposures, both exposures in the native country and the relocated environment. 
And again, acknowledging a, no, a role for genomic ancestral diversity. But again, as we saw in the last study, many Black women in the U.S. and the Caribbean share the same Western African ancestry. And there are similar diversities within Hispanic women as well. Now, the rates of breast cancer are about 25% lower among Hispanic and Latina women than non-Hispanic white women. And again, there are likely multiple factors playing a role in this as well. Genetic factors, reproductive factors, hormonal, as well as lifestyle and environmental factors. And just as our U.S. Black women have a variety of genomic ancestry, the Hispanic population includes women of European descent as well as Native American genotypes. And what studies have found is that the higher European ancestry is associated with an increased breast cancer risk. And they found this both in U.S. Hispanic women and Mexican women. Uh, they've identified a genetic variant in women who have at least some Native American ancestry near the estrogen receptor 1 gene or ESR gene that lowers the risk of breast cancer. And so this one study looked to figure out to what extent the known risk factors influence the risk in Hispanic women. So the University of Colorado published a study in 2017 trying to look at the way ancestry and ethnicity specific differences affect these non-genetic risk factors. They analyzed three population-based case control studies of non-Hispanic white women, Hispanic women, and Native American women with breast cancer. They looked at family history, age at menarche or menopause, parity, breastfeeding, the use of hormone replacement therapy for the postmenopausal women, alcohol use, and body mass index. And they did analysis of European and Native American ancestry for these white, Hispanic, and Mexican women. And what they found was that the white women were more likely to have these established risk factors, except for body mass index where Hispanic women had a higher BMI than non-Hispanic white women. But when they compared the U.S. Hispanic women to Mexican women, they found that they were more likely to have the same risk factors, except Mexican women had a higher BMI than U.S. Hispanic women. When they looked at Native American ancestry, not unexpectedly, they found that non-Hispanic white women had the lowest percentage at 4%, followed by Hispanic at 41 and Mexican women at 71%. And they found that Hispanic women were more likely to have estrogen receptor negative breast cancer than non-Hispanic white women at 23% versus 18%. And so they found that these known risk factors, such as, again, the age at menarche and menopause, parity, et cetera, were inversely related to the extent of Native American ancestry, except for body mass index, which increased with increasing Native American ancestry. And so, although Hispanic women have a higher body mass index than non-Hispanic white women, they have lower rates of postmenopausal breast cancer. They also found that breast cancer risk is higher in US-born Hispanics than foreign-born, and these known risk factors account for fewer breast cancers in Hispanic women than non-Hispanic white women, regardless of age. And so the number of risk factors, again, is inversely related to the extent of Native American ancestry. ancestry. And so these, this study concluded that the established risk factors are less relevant for women with more Native American ancestry. Therefore, they're likely additional genetic as well as our non-genetic factors, such as, again, psychosocial factors, and environmental exposures. And then there's considerable diversity within Asian Americans as well. Again, as we saw in earlier slides, women of Asian Pacific Island descent have the lowest incidence of breast cancer overall at 101.3 cases per 100,000. They also have the lowest mortality from breast cancer at 11.7 per 100,000. But yet the Asian Pacific Island women ha are having the highest rates of increase in breast cancer incidence at 2.1% per year. And so a study was published in 2017 out of the Cancer Prevention, Prevention Institute of California, looking at Asian American women living there. 
Interestingly, California's Asian American population accounts for nearly one third, 30, 32% of the Asian American population of the United States. They looked at the rates of breast cancer in Asian Americans as a group, and then by ethnicity compared to non-Hispanic white women. And they, the main ethnicity groups they looked at were Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Filipino, Vietnamese, South Asian, and Southeast Asian. And what they found that non-Hispanic white women in California had a larger increase in incidence than white women. Now we're up slightly higher from the nation, national average at 2.4% per year or annual percent change. And this increased significantly in all ethnicities except for Japanese. The largest increases were seen in the women of Korean descent at 4.7% per year between the years 1988 and 2016. But for the entire period of analysis, 1988 to 2013, the second largest increase was in women of Southeast Asian descent at 2.5% per year. And then they took a particular look at aged women who were under the age of 50 at diagnosis. And they found that Asian American women under age 50 saw an increase in all ethnic groups except Japanese women, Filipinas, and South Asian women. The highest rates were in Koreans at 3.9% per year, followed by Southeast Asians at 2% per year, Vietnamese at 1.4, and Chinese at 0.8. But all Asian American women over age 50 saw an increase in net incidence regardless of ethnic group. And they also found their incidence rates differed by age and subtype. And so in the most recent years of observation, 2009 to 2013, the rates were lower for Asian American women than white women, except that younger Japanese and Filipino women, so the women under 50 at diagnosis, had incidence rates similar to younger white women. The most common subtype now is hormone receptor positive or two negative, where the incidence rates were slightly lower than white women for all Asian Americans except the young Japanese women. And the least common subtype, which was hormone receptor negative HER2 positive cancer, is actually 20% higher in these young Asian American women than non-Hispanic white women in California, with the highest rates in the younger Filipinas, who had rates 79% higher than young white women. But the older Filipinas, as well as Vietnamese women, also had higher rates than white women of this least common subtype, the 48% versus 39%. And then the other less common subtype of hormone receptor positive, HER2 positive, they found the incidence rates were significantly lower than white women in all Asian American ethnicities, except Filipinas, which had a 15% higher rate overall, with that actually being the highest in Filipinas diagnosed before the age of 50, 20% higher than white women, but still 12% higher than white women if they were diagnosed at age 50 or older. And the triple negative subtype, they found their incidence rates were significantly lower than white women in all ages and ethnicities, except young South Asian and older Japanese women, where these rates were similar to white women. And so their analysis concluded that um, in California, as well as the US, there are continuing to be increases in the rates of breast cancer among Asian American women for all ethnic groups. These largest increases were seen in South Asians, Vietnamese women, and Southeast Asians. And they noted that these are the groups that have most recently immigrated to the US. For young women, the rates in Japanese and Filipino women diagnosed under age 50 were comparable to non-Hispanic white women. But the less common tumors, HER2 positive, were actually seen more frequently among Filipino and Vietnamese women. And so they concluded that we need further studies into risk factors, especially early life exposures, as well as genetic susceptibility. Uh, they proposed, again, more investigation to the HER2 positive subtypes and not combining or disaggregation of Asian American ethnicities in breast cancer research. So what do we know from all this? Well, one in six breast cancers are diagnosed in women in their 40s. 
One third of breast cancers diagnosed in Black, Asian, and Hispanic women are diagnosed under the age of 50. All racial and ethnic groups have younger median ages at diagnosis and death than white women. And the breast cancer incidence slowly to increase, continues to slowly increase overall at 0.5% per year, but the highest increase is seen in women of Asian Pacific Island descent. The mortality from breast cancer has decreased overall, but there remains a black-white disparity in breast cancer death, with black women have a 40, having a 40% higher risk of breast cancer death than white women. And the distribution of breast cancer subtypes varies, varies significantly by age and ethnicity. And so what do we need? Well, we need identification of other risk factors that apply to non-white women. We need better representation of ethnic groups in clinical trials. 12.7% of the U.S. population is Black of African or Caribbean ancestry, but only 3% of patients in clinical trials are Black. We need more research into genetic factors, both within and across the races and ethnicities. And we need research into the environmental factors, the toxins in both the current environment as well as the birthplace, as well as the social determinants of health, such as stress and other less measurable factors. And we also need improved access to high quality health care, uh, especially for women in non-white ethnic groups. And so as both the Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition and Ben Franklin have said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound in cure. So thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you so much, Dr. Oxley. That was a fascinating presentation of the data and the research. Uh, certainly uh, very sobering information. And I'm going to invite anybody who's listening in on our webinar today that if you have a question, you can type it into the chat. You can access the chat on the right-hand side of your uh, GoToWebinar screen. Um, there's a little uh, it says chat and there's a little arrow next to it. If you click on that little arrow to open up the window, it'll tell you to type a message here and you can type a question right into that. Uh, but I have a question while, while we're waiting for people to enter any questions. And that is really like, you know, what should, you know, we don't screen under the age of 40. So what should a, a young woman do? Someone who is under the age of 40 who's concerned about their cancer risk, what should they be doing? That's a great question. So uh, we recommend that any woman over the age of 25, especially women who are either black or of Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry, no later than age 30, have a comprehensive breast cancer risk assessment. And uh, she should speak to her doctor, whether it's a primary care provider, uh, gynecologist, and if that's not available, there are breast centers around the state, around the country. You know, for the, anyone on Cape Cod, right here at the Cuda Breast Care Center, where a comprehensive risk cancer assessment can be performed. Uh, risk assessment um, for someone who is at average risk. We don't start recommending routine screening until age 40, but breast awareness, which has replaced the term breast self-exam, is really important because as we've seen, there are plenty of breast cancers diagnosed in younger women. And even in women who are having mammograms, there are cancers that are diagnosed between routine screens. And so just getting to know what one's own breast tissue feels like uh, is very important so that if something changes, you can let the provider know. But having that risk assessment, talking about the factors we know about, the personal reproductive factors, but also talking about family history and genetics can really help someone figure out uh, where she stands in the spectrum of risk. So, of course, this being MBCC, Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition, we really want to have a, a conversation about environmental factors. And what do, what do you think the environmental factors are that are playing a role in the development of breast cancer in non-white women? There are probably loads of factors at work. 
there are of course environmental toxins because we know that certain areas have higher prevalence of breast cancer than others across ages and ethnicities. Uh, so there are of course environmental exposures. Um, there are so many exposures that likely impact us at different stages of life. Factors that impact breast development, but then other toxins that would be more of a cumulative effect. Um, and then there have to be psychosocial factors, such as the stress and the neighborhood disadvantage that uh, may account for the development of hormone receptor negative breast cancers. And those are the ones that we don't know about the dietary and behavioral factors. You know, we know that higher BMI increases the risk of postmenopausal hormone receptor positive breast cancer, but it looks like high BMI increases the risk of premenopausal triple negative breast cancer. And so there's got to be something at work um, beyond diet, exercise, alcohol intake, um, more toward the lines of the psychosocial stressors and not just the access to health care. Because with access to health care, we wouldn't see these discrepancies in the women under the age of routine screening. And as you were presenting, I was really um very much paying attention to the, the the institutional bias and equity factors that could also be playing into this trend in the data and i don't even know is it is it truly a trend in the data or is it just that we're actually getting the data now i think we're actually getting the data um you know the the trends are limited by how things have been categorized. And so we're getting more accurate um, categorization of tumor biology. Um, we're getting more accurate stage at diagnosis. And so you know, being able to subdivide the tumor subtypes into the four main categories is much more accurate than it used to be. Um, but then what these more recent studies are showing that just categorizing someone as non-Hispanic, white, black, Hispanic, et cetera, um, may be not appropriate as well, because there are these differences between Black women, between Hispanic women, between Asian American women. Um, and so there's obviously lots of factors that we've improved our knowledge on, but lots of them that still need further investigation. And, and, and so where do you see the most room for improvement? Um, well, in a, a few different areas, of course, we need more research into these environmental toxins and the exposures and when are they occurring and how can we prevent these exposures um, as, as early as possible. We definitely need to expand the breast cancer research to more of these ethnic groups. Uh, and we need to improve access to healthcare and screening so that when someone does present at an earlier age, um, who may not be going to the doctor every six months, like someone who's um, got a lot of maintenance medications, for example, uh, so that these younger women are able to go see someone get this checked out without fear or mistrust of the healthcare uh, community. And I think I'd like to ask one more question, uh, Dr. Oxley. I, I'm, I am concerned um, that we, we, those of us who are uh, definitely non-Hispanic white women, right, have a responsibility to be good advocates for our sisters who are Hispanics, uh, uh, women of color, uh, and then uh, ethnic minorities. And so in terms of advocacy, what would you recommend that we do to support um, this as an issue and raise awareness for the general population in understanding how this inequity is playing out in, in our healthcare system? I think education is really key. Um, there are so many misconceptions about breast cancer um, that are out there in terms of you know, people think if they don't have a family history, for example, they're not at risk of breast cancer. And so 
educating everyone regardless of ethnicity and, and culture um, is going to be so important in getting women involved in their own health care research and continuing to spread the word thank you so much uh, on behalf of myself and the mbcc board and cheryl asimo our executive director for mbcc um, i want to thank you dr oxley for this very informative discussion and webinar but i also want to thank you for all that you do day in day out on behalf of your patients and for being an advocate for women's health care on the cape and throughout the commonwealth i want to thank all of our many listeners for joining us for those interested this a recording of this webinar will be made available later today at the mbcc website mbcc.org and have a great afternoon thank you everyone thank you dr marcus